<laughs> Maybe I won't leave. Yes. <clears throat> In accordance with the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act, public meetings may be held in person or by means of communication equipment to include streaming services and other online meeting platforms. Due to the COVID-19 situation, the borough of Fairhaven's municipal, municipal facilities are closed to the public. This meeting is being presented through the Zoom meeting platform and being broadcast from Borough Hall 748 River Road, Fairhaven, New Jersey. Public participation participation <clears throat> for this Shea Tree Commission meeting of November. Oh, December, I got December, 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 December 2nd, 2020 is available by call in by call in phone number or through web conference Zoom. Members of the public will be on mute until the portion for that time. The public has the opportunity to question, comment by phone or through Zoom by the raise of the hand button or be called upon at the appropriate time. Notice that this meeting was included in the schedule of meeting sent to the Ashbury Park Press, the Two River Times, the Hub, Star Ledger on January 30th, 2020, posted on the borough website, the bulletin board in the municipal building and has remained continuously posted as required under the statute. With adequate notice having been given, the Shade Tree Commission Secretary is directed to include this statement in the minutes of the meeting. Brutal. Okay, that's that. Done. Um, yeah, I had the last, I didn't know there was a date on here. I had the last uh, meetings. Um, on the agenda or? Uh, you... No, sunshine law. What he just read. Oh, oh. Okay. I sent an updated one, but. Okay, so roll, roll call. Dave, Dave Becker. Oh, I was going to do it. Would you? Um, I'll do it. Okay, go ahead, Audrey. Okay, uh, Audrey Henny, Allison, uh, Steve Trudell. I'm sorry, you should be answering. Chris Lawson. Here. David. Okay, David Paolo. Here. Here. Michael D'Angelo. Here. Uh, David Becker. Um, uh, Bill Brooks. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have the. Oh, um, I'm sorry, Jason. Chris Rodriguez. Chris McCabe. That's it. Do we have a quorum? Yes. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yes. We had a quorum after four. Yeah, please. yeah you have five members. I don't know <laughs> if we have any public participants. You do. You have two, Gary Patterson and Susan O'Brien. Oh, I see. OK. I just need that for the record. Motion to approve prior minutes. A second. Uh, third. Sorry, I just, I just did that so we could move through it. <laughs> I don't know if that's. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Dave. <laughs> this initiative. It's approved. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the, the next item, the, so the elephant in the room is the secretary position. Allison, are you going to turn over the meeting to me or, or are you going to? Are you, are you staying on? I didn't, I was just, I don't, I wasn't sure. I have you as co-host right now on my host. I'm going to hang in for a bit. Okay. Um, the secretary time? position is um, open. Audrey, I thank you for your, for your contributions. Um, and uh, we sort of have to figure out how this is going to be handled. Um, that's probably the one of the most laborious positions well it probably is it is the most laborious position we have um i love it. i'm open to thoughts on how either we have we can appoint a single se secretary but i propose oh why don't i just give make a proposal we need to sort of scale out the work on this all right and so this is what i propose specifically when we have topics on the agenda I expect, I would hope that each of us who's responsible for that topic could pre prepare a written statement that gets submitted. And then we'll, the secretary 
whoever that is, it might be me, will concatenate those statements together and that will help form the meeting, minute, minutes of the meetings. Anything you prepare as statements are to be read in the meeting. So it is public record, um, but you, you'd be helping with the minutes in that sense. So we just sort of cobble them together and that would be the minutes for the meeting. But um, I, th I think that's probably the most scalable way to do this. Otherwise, it's gonna be a lot of work. Now we voted last time to have a meeting every month. What I think what goes unnoticed is that's work for Audrey, less so for myself, but that's work for Audrey. So now that, that's gonna get surfaced. So it's not, it's not like we could, the meetings are free and you can go off and not do anything. Now, now we, someone has to cobble together the minutes and submit those to the town. So those things have to fall into consideration. So I'll open the floor to ideas. I'll start with Dave. Um, um, I guess that's a democratic way to do it. Uh, if anybody's got a kind of a, a line item with their name on it, you know, you could type up a summary and submit that. Um, uh, no, I, I don't really have any good ideas. It's, it, it is certainly better for the group if there is a designated secretary, but uh, uh, I, I respectfully don't volunteer for that. So, <laughs> so um, but I realize, I, I mean, I feel like we're, I, I, are we adding new commissioners in 2021? Can we also uh, ask that a new commissioner serve as secretary? You could, but you might not get new commissioners, and that's going to be an urgent need on the next meeting. So who's doing it next? Like an initiation. Um, that's a possibility. Uh, How is it handled on other boards and commissions when there's no the secretary? This is a paid position. Like Allison does this. But she's paid, right? She does it for council, she's paid. And I think for zoning, that's a paid position. For zoning, it's a the secretary, it's a salary, but it's like a stipend. But mine is rolled in elections, all of that is rolled into my my duties. But this is not rolled in. <laughs> <laughs> Only the Zoom stuff, but no. Go ahead, Audrey. Audrey. Okay. I um, didn't quite understand what you said about secretary. You said as of tonight, you'll take over and you'll combine. No, I didn't say that. It's not, with the upcoming void of your position, whatever that is, right, I realize you're not moving right away. Um, I'm, I'm pretending like, I'm almost pretending like we'd have to address this earlier rather than later because it was my understanding before tonight's meeting that it would be your last meeting. So um, that's what I'm coming into the meeting with the assumption, that assumption. Um, so let, let me- let Okay, me well- the table. Let's, oh. oh, Audrey, did you have anything else? Can I finish my question? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanna suggest that I, I finish tonight's mi minutes and then in the interim, I will be here till uh, the end till March. March would be my last visit. So I will stay on until then, until you get it straightened out. If you get it straightened out by January or February, that's fine. But if you need somebody in the, on the interim, I will stay just FYI. Can you hear me? Because I just got a thing saying my internet connection is unstable. No, we hear you just yeah. fine. Okay. So that's something if you want to throw around or make a decision now with your yay, nay, or, you know, topic for next one. I just need to know now if I should finish with the minutes tonight and should I uh, bother to attend as a secretary next in January or February, depending on the final vote. I assume most of all of us are pretty much. Oh, I'll let everybody speak for themselves. But yeah, I, I think it's. I think I'm going to opt that you stay on as long as possible. And um, but we still have to handle uh, when you leave. So I think it's worth discussion. So I'm going to continue around the table. Chris, Marson, what are your thoughts? Um, you know, as long as, like you said, I think the. Um, if everybody handles their line items and at that point they really just need someone to consolidate it into the minutes, um, you know, I'm happy to give it a try as long as Audrey will uh, 
give me some guidance and uh, you know, pass the baton. Absolutely. I'll, I'll, Absolutely. I'll be more than happy to consolidate and uh, put the meet put the minutes together. I can help you too, Christian. I help Audrey when yeah she can. Into things. So I wouldn't abandon your ship if. <laughs> and in that case, I move to uh, quarterly meetings once every. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's where I'm going. I mean, that's that's the thing. It's a, it's a it's work, and it's right. the most work. It's not just attending the meeting; it's putting the meeting minutes together, um, and what and all the other stuff Audrey does. So, the more meetings you have, the more work it is. So, uh, mm -hmm. I think we really need to justify the meetings. If we don't have a lot going on, then, you know. We don't have a lot going on. Um, Mike, what are your thoughts? I don't think I have to add anything else, right? I think Christian just made a decision for us and it sounds good. So <laughs> congratulations, Christian. And and uh, you'll be getting my cobbled uh, notes every month or other month. I guess that's the next decision we have to make. OK. Neat and clean. So, so if I if I understand this correctly, so we're partially taking my ideas where people have prepared statements for the projects they're working on. Those are going to be submitted to Chris, and he's going to cobble those together with the help of Allison, and that's how we're going to fill that piece, that role, um, that piece of the role of the secretary position. Is everybody in? Do I understand this correctly? That's what we're thinking. Okay, so the vote on secretary and chairman is next month. I screwed that up last month, but I wanted to get it over with. Um, so I guess we, we can uh, we can memorialize it then. Um, but uh, well, actually, we could probably just wait till Audrey's gone, and then we'll have then we'll have to have take the vote at that point, right, for that position. All right. Does anyone else have anything to add to, add to this? Are you going to stick with the your decision from last month for the monthly meetings? Because Betty Ann's finalizing the calendar, and that she has you in each month. The first I, I'll, I'll open that up again for discussion too, uh, and we'll start with Chris. Chris, what do you think? Well, I know I said uh, last meeting that I think we should do. You know, I guess if we if we have some steam on some things, we should do uh, once a month. But I really. You know, I'm looking at the agenda here. I don't know really if we have that much to go on to justify a meeting every month. So, I mean, I think every other month might be sufficient at this point. Well, you can leave it as is and then do the notice of cancellation if need be. This way you've got it set in the calendar instead of having to pull members and say, do we, we're going to need a meeting this month. Well, well, generally the way we did it, we, we did it every other month, and then when necessary, we just added a meeting. Right. That seemed to work okay. Um, Dave, your thoughts on going back to every other month? Yeah, no, I think I think I voted for every month only because I, I I optimistically feel like we have some initiative and some projects that are more proactive. Um, and I you know I feel like a monthly update on those is not too much to ask. But you know if the group decides that it's every other month is the right cadence and we want to add as necessary I, I i would i would request that we have the town arborist and our council liaison on all those meetings um i think we get we you know we need to uh, i don't know i think we need to organize around an importance here you know i think it's you know the, the meetings do have some um there are follow-ups to do but if we don't have the right players in the room we're we're we're, we're not we're just treading water so you know I, i'm sure six months but if we can make sure that we have full attendance on those uh, every other month it works for me too. Mike? And all the, I mean, I, I agree. Every other month sounds good. I just want to make sure we're following proper procedure where I want to ask whatever the easiest way to do it is. So if it's we have, we say that we're going to have a, uh, a meeting every month and then cancel every other month or have a, a, a meeting every other month and then add meetings. I don't know what is proper procedure. And I guess I would defer to Allison on that one um as far as what the town would want but uh i'm fine with every other month just i want to make sure we're doing it the proper way allison i think there was a question directed at you yeah i i'm thinking you don't if you don't think you're going to need them every other month then i wouldn't it's 
it's not the end of the world if you have to, for lack of a quorum, or if you don't have an agenda. I mean, it, it happens on boards and commissions all the time. Um, but if you have a lot of projects that you're thinking of moving forward for to secure your um, grants with the state, things like that, you might want to, to keep it monthly. I think that still can be achieved. Like, for example, if, if Dave has some urgent need for a meeting, right, we could also have a meeting that's out, out of band, right? Or we, you know, like we did last year, we, we, we had meetings that we didn't follow, follow the strict every other month schedule. You know, we had meetings as needed. So last year, didn't we try to do, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't we try to do, it was, it was maybe, it was, we took two months off or something. We had 10 meetings and we took off maybe July and another month. I can't remember which ones they were, but it was, it was kind we of this went month. every other month last year. And then I would ask at the end of every meeting, if we need to have a meeting in another month or two months. And we sort of decided at the end of every meeting. And then I would tell the town, we're going to have a meeting next month and they would schedule it. That, that's how it worked. That's how this one works. It was, it was, it was, it was flexible. So it was just like, do we need a meeting or not? And that would that we'd come to that decision at the end of every meeting. So we can't stick to that. You just keep it flexible. We'd go to every other meeting, every other month rather. Okay, so I'm gonna motion that we go back to every other month and keep it flexible and, and insert meetings as needed. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we're aye. gonna go back to every other month, Allison. So January, March, May. Are you gonna take any time off in the summer? Just July is usually a problem. So uh, I guess the same schedule we use, we use this year. Okay. Um, I'll let Betty in now just so it doesn't go to the printer. And... Well, that will bring you to July, which is right. a May, issue. July, September. Yeah, I think in July we usually do we usually do the second Wednesday. Yeah. So. So do you do a yay nay on this now, or do you need everybody, like the full commission, all the commissioners? No, we just voted. We have a quorum. Just present, yep. Um, okay. Next topic on the agenda that was sort of inserted as part of the secretary position. <laughs> um, Chris, this goes to you. A, a resident emailed you or, yeah, emailed you a picture there was utility work on Fairhaven Road, 55 Fairhaven Road. I, I was able to get Bill Brooks the address, by the way, by looking at the picture. Oh, okay. It's some Great. investigative work. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's something. Oh, and by the way, why am, I, why am I looking over there is because I have a two laptop setup that I'm working on, and I haven't, I haven't bought a new camera yet, so it's on one of my laptops. That's why I'm looking up over to the right. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll uh, let you run with this. Um, did you... Did you Go to the location. Did you see anything? Um, I, I saw the picture. I haven't gotten Bill's full commentary yet. I'll, I'll tell you what he told me, but I'll let you go. Okay. Yeah. The uh, resident reached out to me. Um, I mean, it, it, full disclo disclosure, it was a friend of mine yeah. who just asked, as you know, sent me the picture and asked for my comments and what I thought. Um, that's when I forwarded it to all of you. Um, he was just concerned. He said, you know, this, this tree, it's a beautiful tree outside in my front yard. It's probably going to die. It looks like they're digging a little close to it. They had clearly damaged the roots. Uh, you can see it in the first photo that I sent. Um, then um, later on that day, before I could get there, uh, they had filled in the hole. And he also informed me that, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, as we know, it was they were doing the uh, water line work and they were looking for the connection to his house. Um, turns out they were digging in the wrong spot. And then uh, once they figured that out, they filled in the hole. Um, so that was my photo. I think I mailed it, uh, emailed it out the next day. Uh, I don't, I, you know, I, I, I don't know how well they filled it in or if they filled it in properly or um, you know, if, uh, now, I'm assuming just whatever they took out of the hole was put back in there, and um, I don't know if that will, if that's good for the roots or not good for the roots. I guess Bill only Brooks. really time will tell. 
Bill Brooks did take a ride or he was going to take a ride there yesterday. He did speak to the utility company about that tree and okay. they are going to keep an eye on it and they have no problem replanting a tree if need be, if something happens to that one, non-stable okay. or whatever, so. Do you happen to know which utility company? Was it the American Water? The Water Company has been doing work on putting new pipe down Fairhaven Road. Was it? It looked like I guess the water company contracts Kylie to do Kylie. the work. Yeah. Oh. I believe Bill spoke to a rep he knows from the water company uh, regarding it. So they were going to work yeah. with Kylie, I guess, to replace the tree or do right by the resident. I assume too that this probably isn't the only uh, instance of this. So, but I don't know if uh, this was the only thing that was brought to my attention. I don't know if anybody else has heard anything, but uh, obviously the extent of the work, um, I think as Teresa said in an email, like, you know, the, the connections are where they are and, you know, this is going to happen, which is understandable, but, you know, since uh, instances like this, they were in the wrong spot and, they probably killed the tree. But I have faith. I think it'll pull through. I do remember, Bill, us having a similar incident on 3rd, I believe. And Bill said that the roots were so superficial that chances of it doing much permanent damage to the tree was not likely. He said it's the deeper roots that really seek uh, nutrition from underneath. So that was just the FYI, something to consider. But for the company to eyeball the tree or for one of us to keep an eye on the tree uh, for the sake of say liability, what happens if it falls onto the people's property? I mean, who's going to answer for any kind of damage done going forward? So probably it would have been a good idea, but probably impossible to follow this company around to see which trees they were that were being affected by their work. However, you know, it's probably inconceivable that we could have done that, but for the sake of liability going down the road, I think that that can be an issue. Just a thought. Can we send them like a letter or something? The, the, the company, the water company to say shade tree is objections to your handling of the digging of the blah, blah, blah. And, uh, is that ever effective and ask for a donation to the sidewalk fund or something like that? That's a good idea. But to the tree fund. Yeah. 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 Our community appeal. Yeah. I believe Bill has a contact at that company. And so, um, and he looked at the tree, he said it, he, he's not sure if it was worth keeping but I'll counter that with the fact that it's worth keeping a tree in that location. It doesn't have to necessarily have to be that one. You know what I mean? So if, if the tree is compromised and looking at what I've learned from all those sessions I went to um, for the CEU credits, yeah, that, that tree is compromised. I think, I, I don't see how it survives with half its roots taken out. I, I have to wait for Bill to comment, but uh, you know, we, we had, this, we had this happen at Third Street, and they were 10 feet from those roots. And they would, I, I talked to an arborist who told me there was damage to those roots. And this, this was far less severe than what happened here. So I assume, I, I can only assume that it was catastrophic damage done to this tree. I mean, the hole was right next to the, the trunk of the tree. Um, so I, I, I think it's worth following up with Brooks on this and see what we can do. You know, my, my, my take is, well, let's get some options from him. What kind of trees can be replaced? If they're willing to replace the tree, I'd say go for it because the, th the thing's so the thing's so compromised. We're going to have a hazard tree, and then the town's going to pay for it, right? I know that he he did say yesterday that he did reach out to his contact, and he said he was agreeable. But I can follow up. I email. I would I would almost my my take is I would say if we can get them to remove the tree and replace it, I would go for that because it's a hazard tree. It's a hazard to tree situation. Like I, I, don't, I can't, give, can't give a timetable, but it could be a year. Eventually, it's a hazard tree situation that the town's going to have to pay for. I'd rather have the utility company pay for it. They should know where their lines are. 
Um, and they shouldn't have made this mistake. I mean, so that's my take. I'll go around the room. Mike, what's your thoughts? Completely agree. If we can get the company to actually, like you said, not only replace it, but remove it and put in a new one of comparable size, doesn't have to be the exact same species, but something that the that the town and, and both and the resident agree with, then I completely agree. And if we could use Bill Brooks' contact, absolutely. Okay, Chris. Yeah, I agree hundred percent. The um, company that did the work should be responsible for the trip. It sounds like they're willing to be. Uh, it's, uh, I guess it's a matter of do we get something in writing or do they just replace it immediately. <clears throat> Audrey, your thoughts? Um, my thoughts are that it's going to take time to see if there is any residual damage. It'll probably take at least six months. Just my thought, because I have indoor plants. I, I work with plants for years and years. So, um, so that's number one. You have to see if there's any residual damage down the road. If it's, if it's obvious right now, then um, you have to figure out the functionality of the tree. Was it ornamental? Was it there for shade? Like what kind of function did it serve? And then consider them absolutely replacing it. It was on Fairhaven Road at what, was it the intersection of Laurel? It was near Clay Street. Um, and yeah. I will say- Down this way, not this way. Yeah. It contributes to the aesthetics of the street, so. Um, it's sort of a like what I call a strategic tree in the sense that as you're driving down the street, this is not tucked away and back in someone's yard. It's in the right of way. So on the next to the sidewalk, next to the street. So um, yeah. Uh, Dave, your thoughts? Yeah, I agree. I think, um, you know, asking Bill to speak to his contact, uh, let them know that the town is not happy with the damage that was done. We were worried about the creation of a hazard condition. It is, as you say, is a strategically placed tree. And we feel as if um, damage was done uh, that that requires, you know, replacement or, or, or something. You know, I think uh, that, I think that, <clears throat> I'm, I'm sorry, guys, Declan, no, please, I'm on the call. No, I, my point is, I think that we need to um, we need to ask the company to uh, rec, uh, you know rectify the situation, and I think uh, Bill can do that with his contacts. I'd imagine that the what is it you said it was not American Water but a subcontractor. I I, I I bet you they, I bet you they would not be happy to hear that the town is upset with their work on behalf of American Water. They might even kick it back to the American Water. People. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if we even have to go into a motion just yet, whether we're happy or not. Right? It's, it's pretty factual at this point that there was se severe damage done to the tree. We can get, I think we can get Brooks to attest to that. And then kindly, since they already volunteered what I'm hearing to replace the tree, then we kindly tell, we work with Bill to say, hey, look, can you use your contact and have this, let's see what we can do to get this thing replaced. So before... Like I said, it's gonna become a hazard tree. Town's gonna to have to pay for it. We're trying to avoid that, in my opinion. So I don't know, Chris Larson, do you wanna take this on or I, I, I'd i be happy to, it's up to you. I think you know the Do you want me to follow up with uh, Bill and-, and... I, could, I could take it, I'm just saying. I, I you, You're you the one who started it, so I've just given you the- Yeah, yeah. I, I just, you know, point me in the direction that, you know, the next step and I'm, I'm happy to take it. It's basically um, working with yeah. Bill. I think what we want from Bill is an assessment of the tree based on the yeah. pictures that was sent. That's first and foremost. Let's establish the facts. And then after we have the facts that the tree was highly compromised, then we want to say, look, Bill, this is going to be a hazard tree situation that we don't want the town to pay for. We like it replaced. And we'd like to know what kind of tree this can be replaced with. And then can we, what are our options? How, 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 how do we work with your contact over at the utility company to get this done? Seem sure. reasonable? Yeah. All right. I, I I really just think it's a matter of uh, timing at this point. Is this the right time to plant a tree, or do we wait for the spring, or whatever? It's not. It's not. I can't it's imagine highly. Not, 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 it's not the right time to plant the tree. The problem is this just happened and it's fresh, right? It's in, if you if you let it if you let this go on and on, then you know so, I don't think anything's going to happen with this tree. It's just going to eventually become a hazard tree. 
So I think we want to strike when the iron's hot, when this work was just done and say, hey, we're aware of it. Um, a resident sent us the pictures and look, uh, they can imply emotion from that, that if, if residents are emailing pictures about the tree, they, I, would, I would think rationally, they would assume that someone's upset. So we don't have, we don't have to tell them anyone's upset, but um, they'll probably assume that. Um, but I think what, what's cr critical is we have the expertise of Bill who's saying that the tree was compromised and it's gonna become a hazard tree that the town will have to pay for. And I think it's fair that they pay for it. That's that. Okay, so that's that item. So I'll put that to the projects list, I guess, on the next agenda and put your name next to it. It's a small sure. project. Sure. Um, the next item on here is, I just wanted to get some of everyone's thoughts on new members. Um, on whether we want to start recruiting new members or we think this is sufficient. Um, so I'll, I'll go around and I'll start with Dave. Your thoughts on that? Uh, my, my thoughts are only this. I, it seems like we have some um, mission members that don't attend regularly. Um, is that a concern? Um, and if so, I think we should seek replacements. Captain missed multiple consecutive meetings like in a row well some of them are missing because of zoom and they're not technic technical or they don't have a computer or something so i i'd say COVID is is one reason why some are not showing uh mccabe seems like he's sort of retiring because his tenure's up so um yeah, those are, those are two members off the top of my head. Um, and then of course, Audrey is gonna be leaving eventually. So we're gonna have some open positions. So we're gonna be really tight on the quorum, the frequent comers, which are really the people in this meeting. Um, if one of us is out, then you know, we're, we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna- Well, if you have people who aren't showing and it's causing you to have lack of quorum, we can send a letter the mayor can send a letter and say, it's my understanding you haven't been able to attend the meetings. Are you still interested in serving? Or shall we look to replace you? It's really a mayor and council. Well, well Allison, we're gonna have natural attrition anyway, because McCabe, I think, is gonna drop off and then right. I'll be dropping off. So I'm saying, so I wanna get thoughts on, you know, those are two open positions. We don't really need to send the letter, in my opinion. For anyone who's not showing up, um, and then uh, maybe later we, we can do that. But for now, I think we just need to think about filling, in particular, Audrey's position because she's here a lot, right? So she's always committing, she's always uh, contributing to the quorum. So um, uh, let me let me go around to to Mike. Mike, what's your thoughts on this, and how do you want to go about getting new members? Yes, absolutely. Um, I guess we could sort of get the word out there, but I think a lot of us have kind of joined this by our own self-interest in doing something for the town and also through the people that we know. So I would, you know, I would put our feelers out because I'm sure that's pretty much how we all started. Um, and then if we can't find anybody, two or three people hopefully would come through that. But if we can't find anybody, then, uh, then put it out as more of a general announcement to the town. Okay. I like that. Dave? Yeah, I agree with what Mike said. All right. Uh, Chris? Larson? I agree. I think it's personal recruiting probably works the best. Okay. Why, why don't I leave this on the agenda and see how... how oh, Audrey, go ahead. Sorry. I just wanted to um, make a point. Uh, I do believe Susan uh, O'Brien brought it up as an issue that having quorum, there's a ratio of members to how many members are attending the meeting do you need to make quorum? So let's say if we only have seven people, will you only need three for quorum? Is it's there a half plus one? Sorry? It's a half plus one. Plus one. So it would be yeah. half of seven, say three and a half plus one would be a fourth person. Okay. And and Audrey, we have two alternates for the purpose of not naming them as 
as members so that those two people can help you make quorum without increasing the number required. In other words, you have nine people to help you make four. Do you follow that? Rather yeah. than seven people to help you make four. Um, there's a couple of people that have already reached out to the mayor for appointments to various commissions, committees, and boards. And it's likely that the mayor will make recommendations. Steve, I would suggest reaching out to the mayor um, if you have recommendations. Um, and I, I know of one named Jill Sullivan who lives on um, Park or Laurel, who's there is a massive tree that went down over Isaiah into her lawn. It was like an 80 foot soaring oak. And I think she's willing to serve. She's got tree in her blood, um, but she hasn't really stepped forward. Um, but if you want, I could put her in contact with you um, to just have a conversation. But I do think you should fill the empty seats because you're, of the attrition you're talking about, plus the ability to make that quorum. Okay. If right, you want so there's, to there's four people who are up as of December 31st, their terms expire. For alternate one, Carolyn Williams had resigned because she moved out of the borough. So that's been vacant. Um, alternate two would be Dave Paola. And then Jason Corrigan and Steve Trudell are the two members where your terms expire. McCabe is 2021. The others are either 2022 or 2023. By the way, alternates can be chair or vice chair or whatever. It doesn't matter if you're an alternate or not. You have the same power and ability as a regular member, Dave. I saw that squint on your eye. I just wanted to say that out loud. It does. I, I was never a full member, by the way, of the Shade Tree Commission in the five years that I served or whatever. You were an alternate the entire time? I was an alternate the entire time. It didn't matter. I learned that because I learned it didn't matter. <laughs> so it never changed. Okay, Dave, I guess you can stay in alternate because it doesn't matter. You I'm, here matter. I'm here for the town in whatever capacity you need me. You could take Carolyn's seat and we could put somebody else as the alternate. Does It's just semantics. It, I don't, it has I don't, no, no <laughs> whatever, impact. I'm fine either way. I was squinting because I was looking at something else. Oh. <laughs> so, to, so to move forward, unless anybody has some strong opinions on people they want to recommend, I think we, uh, I, I think we, we, uh, um, I let Chris forward on some names and then uh, we go from there. Yeah. Let me just say one thing, Steve. First of all, all alternates lives matter. And That's second, fine. and second is I know Jill Sullivan, so I, I'd be happy to reach out to her as well. Oh, okay. If you could take that, that'd be great. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right, on to the project updates. Um, Dave's starting with you with the Salem White Oak Seedlings project. Yeah, that's on Bill Brooks's plate. He was researching with his contacts at the DEP. I've not heard an update from him. So no update, unfortunately. No update. And the location he mentioned he recommended was where? Was Fairhaven. next to the concession stand at Fairhaven Fields as opposed to McCarter Park. He said that tree, that white, that Salem White Oak is going to be wider than it is tall. So you need kind of an expansive area. Okay, but how high how high is that? How high is the clearing? Because we lost two trees that were pretty low. I, I don't know. Well, we lost one. Well, actually, they weren't that low. I, I take that back. But um, I just walk that park every day, and there's the spots I see that even if it, if there's clearance of ten feet and people can walk under it, I don't see why not. And yeah, I think, oh, I think there would be clearance underneath um, yeah. to walk under, but I just think that ultimately a mature one like. You know, when it's a hundred years old, it's going to be massive, but wider than it is tall, but it'll be, okay. you know, 70, 80 feet tall. Because there are spots that still wouldn't, there is the spot where one tree came down that was still, I mean, it has to be really wide to interfere with the field. I mean, I even come close, but okay. All right. Um, the next one is, I don't think we have an assignment for this one, um, but uh, I can't remember her name. I got to check my email, but. Uh, apparently, uh, I guess the cherry trees on Fairhaven Road are getting close to end of life. Is that my understanding? Um, so I, just, I, I don't know where to take this I, I, because to me, they look okay. And I guess, I mean, 
I suppose you just wait for them to die off one by one and replace them. And then we, then we'd have that issue. I, I don't know if we want to be proactive at re, uh, on removing these trees at this point, but uh, I'll, I'll send it around. These are the cherry trees along Fairhaven Road. I, I, just because um, I, I remember somebody's uh, suggestion that sounded pretty good was like, if you look at them, yeah. if, you, if you find, if you take it, the look at those, I don't know how many trees there are, like 20, 30. Yeah. If you think of them as like a section of like a third, a third, a third, you yeah. find the third or like every third one, maybe you replace with a new one. If they are getting near end of life, uh, I right. think the suggestion was like to look at it as like a, every five years, you replace um, a third of the trees so that they kind of have this replenishment, you know, over a long term. Um, I, I thought that was a good idea, but I don't, the, this is a weird one because I don't know what the jurisdiction is. Is it, it's a council project with the gravel path. It's the Fairhaven natural areas trees. Um, but you know, it was kind of brought to our attention through the natural area people. Um, maybe they seem to be asking for some sort of funds or contribution from our side, but I, I feel like they have their own funds on the community appeal side. So I'm not really, uh, procedurally, I'm not really sure. I'd be interested in what uh, Chris's uh, input is on that. Yeah, Chris, I guess I'll, I'll send it to you on this one. Do you have more information on what they would like us to do? So it is a, it's a shade tree issue. No, no, no. It is. I would say it's a shade tree issue if the things are A, in the right of way, and B, a hazard or end of life that would cause them to be a hazard. Um, if Bill thinks they're a hazard, then they're a hazard, and then we should put them on the hazard tree list and then look to um, methodically replace them. That makes a lot of sense to me. The gravel path that was suggested will be far enough away from the tree roots, from what I understand. It'll be very close to that wooden split rail fence, and the split rail fence may actually get moved to the outside of the trees rather than the inside of the trees. So that project uh, contemplated not harming the trees the way the council contemplated harming the trees and I for one voted for it and then I voted to shoot it down because I didn't have the I didn't walk the site over at third street and once I walked the site I realized it was a gigantic mistake to take those trees down I own that issue um, I own that I made a mistake we will not make a mistake about these cherry trees at least I won't do the same thing I did the last time um, and so I do think there's a lot of support to maintain those trees if they're healthy or if they've got enough life in them but if not we could start planning to swap them out replace them with younger trees and make sure when we plant them that they're not on that weird rounded hump i think that may have um, diminished some of the life of those trees um, because the roots are you know they're all surface roots that may be part of the species uh, the way that it, it lives. Um, again, Bill's not here, so I don't know the all of the ins and outs that he would say, but I would support um, finding money for those things and um, whether it's or shade tree or part of the gravel path project or a combination of all that, we'll, we'll figure that out. I think the town really appreciates those trees and I suspect there's probably money around the state that might be able to help us um, in support of that, what are called shovel ready projects, take the trees down, put the new ones in. I think that if we display a need, we could probably get some kind of grant for that. Um, and many of you who are, um, you know, certified, um, you probably have heard about these shovel ready projects and the grant money that goes along with them. So um, happy to go in any direction you guys want to go. But uh, again, not your problem necessarily unless it's a hazard situation so what's the first step there having bill identify whether we have hazard trees yeah well i i think i with this gravel project has an arborist been hired to give expertise on the on the, I, I the think park. Rich, when he drew up the design, would have consulted. What we, had, what we had a problem with on Third Street, what, they, they put in the path. I thought the path was fine. I like the walkability. But when they drove through the routes, it then became our issue. I'm getting phone calls at work. Hey, people are ticked off, taking pictures. They drove, just drove through the roof. They did it again, this sort of thing. We want to avoid that situation. Yep. Um, and I think what 
I did talk to an arborist and there, he did have ideas on what they could have done differently. So I'd like to see that approach done. So we currently don't have a hazard tree situation. We most definitely don't want to see a hazard tree situation created from the construction of the path. So my question is, has an arborist been consulted? Is an arborist going to be consulted as part of that budget by that project? Yeah, I would imagine that. Um... Because if council tells me the trees aren't going to be damaged, that's not going to be good enough. I would rather see it here from an arborist. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we don't know this, the species of this, the, the tree that well. It could be a shallow roots, could, you know, the damage could be substantial based on the type of tree. If it has a long, deep tap root, maybe not. But I don't know. So, so where the project stands right now, is it still in concept phase? I believe it has gone to, um, Allison, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's gone for grant money for um, infrastructure improvement in the form of sidewalks, um, looking to, you know, a hammer looking for a nail with the state to try to um, fund part of this project. I, I believe that's where we are right now. Uh, you're on mute. How'd that happen? Um, <laughs> Monmouth County Open Space, I think, too, he was looking into grant funds for that. Yep. So, so we're pretty far out on the curve. We've got years, <laughs> if you will. To, to get arborists and planning. And I'm not saying we don't do exactly what you're saying, but we probably won't spend money on arborists unless we think we've got a good read on getting it funded by the county um, to do the project. So there's a sequence here. Happy to get Bill involved early um, without spending any money um, and have just sort of a practical look over. Um, but we're, it, there's lots of time here um, because of the way the state and the county work. Yeah, it was, we had a hearing back in August for the Monmouth um, County Open Space Grant Yep. to continue that trail from Brookside Farm through Ridge to the entrance of Fairhaven Field. So once, usually once we find out that we can secure the grant, they go through they give an actual plan that's when they we can get the arborist and yeah. all that to help design and preserve the trees and i think the proposal was sent to the shade the um uh natural area, area. Yep. Yeah. Well, so that i'm clear i don't know if anyone else is unclear um so we're trying to get the grant money who's working on that from the from the borough well the grant the engineer, our administrator, and council. Um, and it would, there was but an the heavy, open public. The heavy paperwork is, the, is, is who? The bar engineer to get the grant? Our engineer prepares all that, and the administrator and the engineer submit it. Well, okay, the letters then... of support, when it gets to that point, they'll probably add that someone from the natural area committee, shade tree, recreation to do letters of support for that. Um, I had, may I add anything at this point? Yeah, go ahead, Audrey. Um, I, I, was, um, I think it would be to our benefit to include um, town opinion or town involvement and what gets me to that thought is if you all remember when Dave, I think his name was Dave Fuller, came to one of our meetings, he mentioned how those trees were planted and they were kindergarten or first grade children um, raising funds and then actually helping with putting the seeds in the ground. So it was a town wide involvement to a degree. And, you know, those kids are grown now. I mean, probably some have passed, I think it was over a hundred years ago. Um, but just the pride that the town gets kids growing up and seeing what they did and passing it on to their children. Like, I think that's a good idea, even though we're in the early stages of the plan, this might be the time to incorporate, you know, the school. If you can condense all that, I'm a terrible speaker, but do you hopefully you get my thought. 
Okay, but I, I think we have two issues, right? We have a path coming in, um, and, and I just don't. I have a hard time seeing how this commission approves to pro help su put any support, if, if we're even asked, behind a project without having expertise from arborists saying it's not going to create cause damage to the trees there. The second issue is we have trees at end of life, and it makes sense if they're all going to expire at the same time that we systematically start to replace some of them at a time. So there's two issues here. Right, so it's, I think we need I need to bi bifurcate this on the on the agenda. The first is it, it, Chris, I don't know if you can clarify this, but why can't we get an arborist involved on this again? We, I mean, the we, can. Money comes in. we, we can, but I would, I would further bifurcate or trifurcate. The path's not going to be near the trees, so it doesn't matter. We're, we're pushing it far away enough from the trees that it will have no impact on the trees. But so I think I would... How far? We're going all the way to that fence. I, but I've walked there and that, there's tree roots there. No, I understand, but they're far enough away from the, the tree core that they won't impact them. They're, I'm asking you, who said that? The engineer. If you look our at- engineer is not an arborist. Who, who else? Did Bill but Brooks? He consults our arborist. He spoke to Bill Brooks. OK. So we, we also have to follow up with Bill on this to see what he says. If he said, if it says they're far enough away, then we probably- then we'd And go. if we need to move them another five feet, if we need to move that trail in another five feet, we will. All right. um, but. I don't want to move the path and do all that stuff if it's like if we've got problems, if these things are truly end of life, and I'm not sure where that whole notion came from, but if they are end of life, then we've got to do something about it regardless of the path, whether we earn the money, all of that stuff. I 100% I support and agree with what you're saying, Steve. Okay. And if you go to the August 17th, or I can forward you council's August 17th, uh, meeting minutes where the hearing was held and Dick Fuller, who Audrey had mentioned earlier, spoke about it, asked a question. There was a whole bunch of input from the public in it. You could see what was discussed, what was proposed, what concerns, support for it were. Yeah, and, the, and just taking a step back, um, why, uh, why a path there? Like, what's the deal? Why is that a case? The answer is um, in the 2015 reevaluation of the master plan, uh, people wanted um, a more walkable town. And if you go to the end of Buttonwood, there's no sidewalks on Buttonwood, as you guys all know. And then when you get to the street, there's no sidewalks on either side of the street. However, if you can, if you can cross the street, then you could walk. And Steve, you walk this all the time. If you could walk safely on a path, it's better than having p kids or strollers or people walking um in the street there it's just it, it's a it's a formula for disaster um for pedestrians so that's the that was the reason why this this project came up and we thought we could get money for it we still think we could get money for it so you know the taxpayer doesn't have to pay out of their own pocket to have this benefit I, i'm you know i'm not opposed to the walkability concept it's a lot of this comes down to trade-off decisions if there's going to be damage or there's other ways for things to be done. I talked to two people, because the last time this happened on Third Street, I talked to an arborist and I talked to Bill and there were there was damage done to those roots and that work was done away from the trees. But the, the roots were frayed. So that was gonna cause, uh, so not only, um, I think the arborist said that, that's more likely for insects to start to invade that type of cut. It, they needed to do a clean cut. Yep. There's no oversight on who was actually seeing that that, that was corrected. So um, this is that that kind of situation. I'm trying to avoid. I don't want to beat a dead horse on this. And then um, I guess for the end of life thing, I, I think we got to just follow up with the, the that the nature area folk and see um, that the natural area and see who came up with this. I don't know if it was Dick Fuller or who, but. Um, I guess I could take that on and try and move forward with this. Was it Carolyn Ferguson, maybe? She she did, but I, 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 I don't know where the end of life of those trees came from. I mean, maybe it was her. She asked for it to be ended, added to the agenda, so I figured we'd bring it up for discussion. Cool. All right. Okay, so um, I'll put myself on that. 
And that would just uh, that would be Bill confirming that you know having Bill look at it as anything at the end of life, right? It's I guess that would be a simple. We have two things: Bill looking at end of life, and Bill telling us, you know, about the pathway if he if he sees this any if he foresees any damage to the root systems of the trees. Agreed. Um, I, but like I like I said before, I think I think the town when you're doing work around trees, there's, I, I'd like to see the budgets where arborist was hired. And I, 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 I'm arguing there's probably very few budgets where an arborist is allocated. I'm just a guess because that's my limited experience, but I'm just guessing. I, I mean, um, the most money we've ever expertise from Bill, but a lot of times the feedback I'm getting from him is he's not asked. He wasn't asked the last time, so I don't know if he was going to be asked this time. So we're going to have to ask him ourselves. I think the most money we've ever spent um, on an arborist or a tree analysis is on Buttonwood with the. Um, the assessment that was done uh, earlier this year. And that was like five grand. It wasn't a lot of money either. It was a small number. Right. And did Sig panic? They hired Sig. I know he did the area of Buttonwood. I don't know if he was asked to look along Fairhaven Road to do a tree assessment as part of his. Oh, he. I'm sure he was not. Um, but I can't imagine driving up and down and looking at those trees would take very long. I mean, it's not like Buttonwood, it's much easier, but what do I know? <laughs> I, I was quoted a value of $700, but that was after the roots were damaged on third street. To uh, evaluate the site pre, sorry about, pre-damage, pre <laughs> I, I can only assume it would have been a lot less costly, probably maybe half that. Yeah. We're not talking a lot of money. Um, so, um, and, and the reason I like an outside opinion is because the top, it's just nice to get an outside opinion too, some independent, an independent opinion. And I don't think it costs that much. So, uh, it'd be, it'd be nice to see that our bursts are consulted uh, whenever there's work around trees. Um, okay. Next project, unless anybody else has anything to say on that one, Audrey. You're muted, Audrey. I just wanted to clarify, you said there were two issues and one was um, about having an arborist involved. And what was your second issue? The, the first issue is to make sure there's not gonna be any damage to the trees from the pathway project. I don't know the official name of the project. The second issue is the term, determination of if the trees are at end of life and what to do about it. Okay, good enough. Thank you. And I just sent you all the minutes from that meeting. Just yes, if you want to reference it. Okay, thank you. The minutes reflect just the public. The minutes reflect the engineer's presentation, council's input, and the public. It's everything, Steve. So the engineer, the engineer has diagrams. They're not in the. He did present the diagrams. Um, I can pull that recording. Mm, yeah, I can pull that recording from that meeting and send it to you if you want to watch it. Because what what would be useful is the exact location of where the pathway is going to be relative to the trees, and then we then that if, if Bill doesn't have that information now, then he's going to need it, right, for me to do my job. I'd almost turn it around inside out and say, hey, Bill, where should this path go to keep the tree safe? Could do that too. Yeah. And this way, we, we just go back to the engineer and say, this is what we'd sign off on and call it a day. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this is um, probably out of our hands entirely until a plan is made because it sounds like everybody's focused on the sidewalk and gravel. I don't really hear much about the tree except for the possibility of end of life. And the only one that can handle that at this point is Bill. So for us to be concerned with the gravel part of it, I, I just don't understand how we're involved in that. Is that um, correct or we am I wanna, misled? Audrey, we just want to prevent harming the trees because if we harm the trees, then we create a hazard situation. And if we can be smart enough to avoid that, then we, we want to. That's all. Oh, OK. Clear enough. And how this usually sometimes turns out is work starts around the trees. People see roots 
coming up from the ground. I think the trees are damaged. They could be. And then we get, then we get contacted after the fact. And that's what we're trying to avoid this time. Because that wasn't pleasant the last time. Okay. Um, that's that on that guy. All right. Unless anyone else has any other comments on that. I think we're good. So the next project is the Tree Giveaway Initiative. Dave and Chris Larson. Uh, after last meeting, Chris and I had no action items. The takeaways were for Steve to confirm our funds and look into establishing a website or an email address for uh, for submissions. Okay, I, I have work to do. I, I dropped the ball. I got, I got more work to do on that guy. So um, the site probably, if it's a, like I said, I think I said at the last meeting, if it's a static site, I'm pretty sure that can be done for free. If it needs functionality, then uh, we're gonna have to pay some money. The email address. I don't know, Allison, if we can uh, set up an email address for this, an Office 365 email address or anything. No. For the idea is people actually. Maybe we don't want to do that. Uh, I I think. I, let me let me let me get back to you, Dave. And you let me let me work on that. Thank you. Let me work on that. All right. You know, do we know approximately how much funds we have? I, I don't think we have much. Um, I don't know, Allison, if you have it in front of you, if you have the financial system up. I know we spent about, we get some money from the uh, donations. I think we had about- Media appeals. Yeah. Which we just got um, some checks in, I think, just before Thanksgiving. But I want to say we get like twelve hundred on average, right? Say again. I'm sorry. What do we get in from the community appeal every year? About twelve hundred bucks on average. I say it's probably a little over a thousand. It yeah. varies year to year too. A little over a thousand. So we, and then we spent roughly, I don't know, half of that on uh, the Tree City initiatives, which is the, the contest. And we spent another half on training. So maybe we have three, uh, I, I would assume we have, maybe we have 300 bucks, 400, maybe up to upwards of $500. I had to take a guess, but we can get a concrete number. Yeah, I mean, I think that was gonna help us determine how many trees we can give away you know and it's we were thinking it was only going to be like one or two anyway so like you said the, the, we got to just get the process down and we can scale later but let's just work on giving one tree away <laughs> and it could be and i like the idea of like another kwanzaa and cherry to go somewhere else in town um we discussed that last time as well but the uh uh, you know, it kind of, it's dependent on what funds we have available. And then do we need to have some sort of like, you know, a further community appeal or fund drive, um, fundraiser. Uh, but yeah, it, it, you know, I think it starts with what kind of money do we have to spend now? And then the mechanic. Okay. Yeah, I think we just got to, like my, maybe I'm a little tired or my mind's not clear, but um, I think we have to inventory all the items that we need to do here. Um, while you're talking, I'm trying to look up what I can find in Evans. Let me put more thought to this because you know, the process and how it's going to work. I know people are going to submit, say, a picture of where they would like a tree. And I don't know if it's their yard or some or some place on their street or someplace in the town they want some place in the town they want to see a tree planted. From there, we're going to have to get expertise on what tree you can actually go there. Right, you can't just put any tree there. Well, Bill, Bill has already he has a list of suggestions, right? But there's there's a there's a list of trees, but it, that doesn't mean that we can plant any tree any one of those trees anywhere. No, of course opinion. not. It, it, everything is so, right tree, right tree, right place is is we definitely want to be mindful of that. And, and he might go off list, and he may have a perfectly valid recommendation. And so, and the other thing is, how, how do we pay Bill for that expertise? It's not like a freebie, right? He's got to go to these locations, this location too, right? He's got to get paid, I think, right? Right. 
Um, and then once, once we know what tree is going to get planted, we have to work with the nursery to get the trees because it might not be an in inventory. So you might have to give us more than one tree. Um, and that's also going to be approved by the resident. If this is going on private property, do you even like this tree? This is what we can do for you. So it's not like I can, you know, I don't know if you can just say, hey, we're going to give you a dogwood and just plant it anywhere if we want to do the right tree in the right place. I don't know, am I all complicating this? <laughs> well, I, well I, think I, we've, I think we've gone around and around on this. I think the idea is like there's, you know, we can come up with, a, I mean, the the applicant doesn't need to accept a dogwood if they don't want a dogwood, right? If we, the idea is hopefully we're going to get a handful of applicants and yeah. if it's dogwood or if it's cherry tree and um, we tell somebody, Hey, congratulations. We propose that we have a cherry tree to plant in your yard. And they're like, ah, I hate pink. Um, yeah. You no. Know, so, I mean, it's, it's, I think, I think the idea is just to see what, what we can do and what process we can hammer out um, and how we can engage the community uh to try to you know to ultimately try to increase the canopy of this town but you know step one is let's give one tree away uh bill has suggestions as far as what kind of trees they can be if they're you know if they're going to be super tall that requires a certain type of light and space if they're going to be more ornamental we can accommodate that as well um yeah i think we, we i think we kind of hashed a bunch of this out at the last meeting but the uh uh you know the next steps are like what do we have to spend and how we mechanically gonna um, appeal to the community or receive submissions, I guess I should say. There's a lot of steps to this. I mean, it's really not a very easy project to take on and just to organize a task list itself is difficult, it seems. And everything is dependent on Bill. And uh, like you said, who, what, when, where, and how, what tree, I mean, there's so much involved. Is it worth keeping this project? Yes. Right. I think it's worth it. I think we came up with a task list last time. Um, you know, I think that we had some specific takeaways and uh, you know, it's, it's, it seems like we didn't get completed in the, uh, in the last month, but I mean, we, we can continue to push this tree giveaway initiative. I think people would be made happy. It, it, it adds relevance to our, commission in general it uh, you know allows us to pursue this you know canopy project like um you know that we talked about last year I, I don't think it's that hard i think we just need to a figure out how much money we have to spend b figure out how people are going to submit photos and then ask for submissions and that's where we are so so let me add myself to the project i'll do the static website and uh email address um We'll, we'll just use email for now. I'm not going to upload to cloud storage at this point. It co it's just going to cost money. Um, and let, let me let me work on that. And then I'll see, see where we are and make some progress. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, one, one additional suggestion. When I was chair, we had been run through the ringer by just a single resident, but somebody who had taken possession of a tree during a project like this in the 80s. And the tree ended up dying. And he's like, get your tree off of my property. And we're like, what? I don't know if Mike D'Angelo, do you remember that guy? I remember. Oh yeah. yeah. I remember. Okay. So the only thing I would say um, with, um, with as much respect as I can say, you need to <laughs> make sure these people know that they're, once you give them the tree and it's planted, you know, we wash our hands on it. We can't get people 20 years from now paying the price for, some, you know, no good deed goes unpunished. I really don't want to see that happen to, you know, anyone on this commission or anybody in the future. That, that's my only real contribution other than say, this is absolutely worthwhile. Building the canopy is worthwhile. This is really what we should be doing as part of our, as part of our mission. So I totally support what you guys are doing. Yeah. I think last time we talked about, um, you know, there's two versions of this. One is like a, like a street tree, uh, which would then involve the town and the DPW and who's going to maintain it. And then the other version is like a private tree. And to your point, yeah, yeah, I think it needs to be established right out of the gates that a private tree is going to be the owner's responsibility to maintain. We're giving you a free tree, but you got it now. You own it, you water it, you, you know, you make sure it doesn't fall over on your neighbor's fence. And uh, yeah, you know. and if it's, sorry, if it should fall over, then what? Like, how do we take it from there if the tree starts to fail early? It's there. 
we won't plan in the right away and it's their tree and it, they they sign off on all the risks and benefits that are associated with having a tree that that is my strong suggestion so you think you need actually need a legal write up on this some no i think it's mostly just a disclaimer you, you just you know when you give them the tree you give them the the paperwork and here's your tree and it's yours and we're out I, I'm sorry if I, I missed it. My computer cut out there. I had a little technical difficulty, but I think it, a lot of the problems that we were discussing that we could potentially have, we thought we were going to negate by, you know, the thinking that if a, a resident actively participates in this program, there's going to be a mutual understanding that, you know, you're getting this tree and we're good to go. And it's your responsibility. I thought I, I just assumed they would be re understood. Well, th uh, as part of the website, they could check off a consent form, yeah. right? Before they submit something. Mm -hmm. And that's just standard. Yeah. And if anyone has an issue, like, uh, I mean, part that's not going to an issue 20 years down the road because <laughs> the website might not be up at that point. But, you know, we could also say we made it clear that, you know, um, main, this is yours now. Well, if we put it in the uh, minutes, it'll be there 20 years from now. In, yeah. in the minutes from the Shade Tree Commission, we'll be totally covered. We have, here's the application, Here, here's the disclaimer. Okay. That shouldn't go in this, in these minutes, right? Once you're established, then it will be placed into minutes, correct? I don't want to write anything about that now because it's still being uh, formed just yep. after. Just to cover myself. Yeah. Okay. Mike, D Mike D'Angelo is using the raise hand feature, so I have to call on him. Thanks, Mike. No problem. Uh, just as a question for Chris and Dave and potentially Steve, uh, do you guys see this as a uh, a public right of way tree or a private tree on the on the resident's property? The the latter, private tree on the property, because of all those because of all the maintenance issues that we think can come up. Um, you know, with the street tree, uh, street tree then requires DPW to, you know, have oversight and we want to absolve the town of maintenance going forward. We want it to be a tree giveaway, but th with the mutual understanding to Chris's, you know, point that the, the owner now has a free tree that they need to maintain. Yeah. Okay. Kind of like what you do for Arbor Day when they, you were doing that at one point through the library. We gave up, we gave about hundreds of trees. <laughs> I wonder I don't know. how many Five, last... we gave out hundreds. I wonder how many lasted. I still have one. I have a bunch. I planted some in the natural area. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> On record. <laughs> Is this being recorded? <laughs> yeah. <I was> rogue. <laughs> Absolutely is. Um, Better bit of the town. I'm going down. <laughs> Scandal. You need a good editor. I planted them there too, but they were approved. We put them in that designated area in the side of the fence. No, no, I, I they planted Dave Becker. I spent half my afternoon doing that. <laughs> Not doing that again because I don't think those trees are there like six months later. So, um, oh well. I suggest we drop the subject. <laughs> Right now. Okay. Um, For unless the moment. anyone else has anything to say on that, I'm going to move on. So takeaway is I got to work on the website and the email stuff. Um, I think there's other process stuff that probably needs to be looked at, but that's a we can talk about that next time. Um, <clears throat> the final project here, Mr. D'Angelo, Community Center Center Fields Field Fields uh, Reforestation. This has to do with the trees that are were along the border that were removed. Um, Bill gave us a list of trees, and now I'll leave it to you. Yeah, so I spoke with Nicholas Porchinski, who is the Assistant Director of Engineering and uh, Public Works here in town. He had no knowledge of this project whatsoever. Um, so I reached out to DJ Breckenridge, who is the Director of the Parks and Rec Committee, and he told me that this, is, this project is now on hold, given the changes, potential changes with the police station. So... I think we could drop the subject for now and I'll revisit when I hear back from Nicholas when it becomes an issue again.
Uh, okay, we, we declared this project as part of our project. This is something we, we were asked for a list of trees. Yeah. And, and, and so the way I, I sort of started to organize the meetings was to create projects and assign people. Right. So I, I wouldn't but, expect Nick to know about our project. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's not really an issue right now because we don't want to do anything until we decide what's going to go on with the police station. With the current proposals on the police station, how is that going to affect the border, bordering these homes? That's where these trees are going to go. So I, I, I mean, I'm... But also it may affect the playground according to DJ. So we don't know how expansive it's gonna be. So um, I mean, I, I could you know, create more impetus and, and, and put more input in, but um, I just don't think it's gonna be a, a big issue right now. Yeah, I, 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 I would ask that we look at the proposed designs because if they're not moving the basketball court or doing anything like that, then- Well, they I may be, they may be. They may be? To, according to DJ, yeah. I mean, Allison may know this more- This sounds expensive. Them. Yeah. So uh, let me do this as the head of facilities. <laughs> I find it wildly unlikely that we will have parking lots where basketball courts are. I have a, I find it wildly unlikely we will have a field house or an indoor pickleball court or any giant structure um, on the tennis courts or on the playground. I do think we should replace that buffer. Um, I think it's going. I, if I had a, if I was a gambling man, I would say that the, the community center aspect of the police station would move to um, an addition over a Fairhaven Fields near the concession stand to make that building ADA compliant and to um, have all the parking and ADA everything in the parking lot and the lighting and all that stuff away from a whole bunch of homes is probably going to be a heck of a lot more palatable to the citizens of this town than trying to put anything in that park other than maybe reestablishing that buffer and doing some uh, water management over in the park. Um, there is a serious um, movement uh, by that community which if you guys remember 11 years ago or however long ago they wanted to, you know, the town was considering putting lights on those fields and they mobilized and they shut that down. Um, they are very experienced in shutting those kinds of things down. I've been put on notice by those citizens that they will mobilize and I'm fine with that. You know, we want to do things that are within the will of the, the people of this town. And if that, if the, if putting something, like what was proposed to the council a couple meetings ago um, isn't to the liking of the people in the neighborhood. We shouldn't, you know, we really need to strongly consider that. So I think DJ's right. There's a lot of unknowns, um, but I do think that rebuilding the buffer is a fairly safe thing to consider uh, because any building that's going to go there is probably five or five or more years down the road because the police station is going to take two and a half years to do. Um, and I do think that um, that basketball court is probably going to be safe. Um, a little inside baseball, some of the talk about the tennis courts, that will be a staging area for um, the, the, the dirt that will be dug out of the, for the foundation for the new police station. And then once that dirt gets replaced, it'll be all equipment used, you know, equipment will be parked there for uh, the construction of it. So there will be a lot of jockeying around going on, but I don't think that that buffer or the playground or the basketball court, the big one closer to third street is in, is gonna be in peril. I know that's more than you bargained for, but I figured it was worth telling you guys what was going on in that regard. So I do think that advancing the buffer project, um, you know, at least doing our part um, to keep that moving forward would be appreciated by the, the people in that neighborhood, even if it doesn't get executed on for another year or so. Once things stabilize and a plan is set for not building a building there. Okay. Noted. <laughs> Please don't put any of that in there. Oh, um, okay, <laughs> not at all. No, it just it just sort of affirmed what I was trying to say because I just don't see how. I don't know. I don't think there's going to be a building there. I, it's along the border, so I. 
I can that's see the benefit. Probably continue exploring this. I don't even think that's a shade tree issue at this point at all. No, the 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 species um, is what really the I think the council was looking for recommendations from the shade tree commission on the species so that we don't plant those sweet gums again, which are dirty, messy trees and aren't really, you know, fit for purpose for a playground or a ball field. They're just a mess. Doesn't mean we cut them down. It's just, let's not make that mistake again. It, it seems like everything is being restructured over and over. Doesn't sound like there's a concrete plan. Everybody has different opinions. I mean, I personally don't really follow it. However, I've never seen any kind of blueprints of exactly what's going on. Um, it just gets tossed around endlessly. So I just think at this point, the shade tree has minimal involvement until there's more of an established plan within the town. That's just my opinion. Um, anyone else have thoughts? Uh, we lost Dave. Chris Larson? I really have nothing to add to that. Okay. Um, I don't know where Dave went. Uh, Mike, your thoughts? I, mean, I could reach out to Bill and see if he has any recommendations, if, if that's the next uh, step. Um, I mean, I, I like to know for sure to make sure that we're not, you know, we're not doing something needlessly um, that's going to be taken down in the next couple of years or be affected. Um, it doesn't sound like it will be, but who knows, right? So, but I'll reach out to Bill. I, I, I think the, I think the, maybe we take this in stages, but the initial ask is this, what trees and where are they going to go? All right. That's it. And if it ends there, it ends there. We, that's it. Um, you know, we're not getting funding for it. Um, and I guess there's other people in the borough that are better that, at that than us, clearly. Um, so that's that. Um, I will say this, though. The feedback I get, I live in the area. The feedback I get all the time is the um, playground is unusable because there's no shade. People go to McCarter. Oh. I spent all summer in McCarter. It was 10 degrees cooler. There's shade. That park, I never go to. It's unusable. I can't bring my kids there. It's way, it's... It's 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 a it's a ball field. It's for kids to play ball. They play basketball. They play ball. My kids, they're not they're not that age. Have no interest in that park. Go other than you know maybe fly a frisbee when it's empty. But there's no shade. So um, any redesign, and if there's going to be a playground, I think like like was done at Sickles, which is well designed. You need shade. Not Sickles here. Sickles the the market. That playground, mm -hmm. seating, trees all around. Um, the parents all sit around, and the kids play in the middle. That's a perfect. And the bathroom. Place. There's a bathroom there too. Bathroom, and then the, the terrain. You have the, you have the track. It's walkable. It has everything. It has the whole shibumi. So we drive there, but we don't have it here. We used to drive there too. <laughs> I used to do the Trying same thing. to get thing. something, but that's where we go. We don't is go that to, town funded? Is that does um, Little Silver fund that, or does Sickles fund it? Well, I believe Silver. those are municipal um, fields. That's not private property. Yeah. Well, I, I was just saying relative Sickles market because that's the because that would make the big the biggest difference is who funding it, who's funding it. Just yeah. the thought. I mean, if we get somebody to privately fund a nice playground somewhere in Fairhaven, that would be nice, you know, but it's highly unlikely. That's why I was just curious if Sickles as a corporation or whatever they are, LLC, were they funding that? And um, just a thought, you know, maybe that can happen somewhere in Fairhaven if nobody can get together on um, something that everybody agrees with. Whatever. I think I remember talking to them, and it's it's not privately funded. Yeah, there's a. Um, by the way, we are paving Third Street. We we only paved up to Church, from um, from Fairhaven Road when we redid the sidewalks when we had the um, uh, sidewalks to school project. I can't remember 
we connected um, Hans to um, to Sickles School. Uh, we went from uh, Knollwood to Sickles. The paving never got done, and that's actually getting done uh, in 2021. Just so you guys are aware. Is that on Third Avenue? Yeah, it won't affect any of the trees or any of the any of that stuff. But um, uh, just know that that. There. What's that? There'll be equipment and stuff. Yeah. Staged at some some point. They just have to be careful. Yeah. There will be. Yep. And you know, it might be staged um, on the grass uh, in front of where the DPW is. Um, there's probably enough space there, but who knows? We'll see. Okay. Um, I'm gonna move on unless anyone has, has anything else to say. Okay, um, we're now in the public participation section. I see a hand, Gary, Gary Patterson. Let me allow you in, Gary. You with us? Ask the. I'm going to yeah, ask can you. Can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me? Yep. Hello. Hi, Gary. Hi. How are you? Doing well. Uh, yeah, I was just calling in, uh, mainly um, in regards to that community center um, buffer, the trees, you know, that we just discussed. Um, I know it's been on the um, the agenda for quite some time. I think I attended. A meeting, um, I guess, about a year ago, where they said that they would probably be uh, planted this spring um, in 2020, which you know, obviously, a lot of things um, changed this year. And uh, yeah, I've noticed that it's been on the um, the agenda pretty much every month, you know, since they cut the trees down. Um, I know that initially they cut the trees down. Uh, because I believe that a, a large branch fell on the slide that was in that playground. Yep. And I understand why they cut that tree down, but they cut down every tree along that, you know, along that fence line. Um, so I happen to live uh, on Maple Ave. Uh, you know, my, my property backs up to that, that border. Um, so, uh, you know, I think there's a couple of reasons to replant those trees. One is for the shade, as you mentioned, and another is, is just for a, um, you know, a visual and a, um, um, you know, so a sound kind of a little bit of a buffer. And, uh, also since they've cut those trees down, they, they kind of regraded it and, you know, there was a bunch of trees there before they they cut them down and, and kind of regraded towards the fence. And when it rains, um, it collects, you know, a lot of water. There's, um, you know, large puddles along the along the fence line. And then, you know, actually makes its way onto, you know, my property and, and my neighbor's property also. So, um, you know, I don't know that they need something elaborate, but you know, I don't know, like Chris said, if waiting for five years or whatever, you know, or however long it takes um, for some kind of decision to be made on on the um, community center. Um, so I, I would, you know, be in favor of, you know, trying to advance this, even if, you know, if it's, even if it's nothing elaborate, at least some type of uh, buffer, you know, shade, and uh, I don't know if that's the shade, you know, I know that's the shade tree commission. I don't know if they can make a recommendation to the council. You know, I'm not sure how it works, but anyway, I mainly just saw it on the uh, on the agenda and wanted to see what the status was. So, Steve, um, if I if I may make a comment, go ahead. Yeah. Um, the, Gary, thanks for your call. Um, thanks for sitting through this. Uh, I'm, I had a 45 minute call with Kathy Elderhorst. Do you live next to her? I do, yeah, actually, yeah. I spent a, a good deal of time on the phone with her earlier. Um, and part of the conversation was around the buffer. Um, right. I 
just wanted to reiterate some of the, I mean, I don't, I'm not going to go through everything I said before, but um, I've had that same conversation with Kathy uh, earlier tonight, and um, I will take it back uh, with the, you know, recommendation from Steve and the commission, um, you know, to the de degree that they want to make a recommendation, I will, um, I'll bring that forward and support it. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate that. And, um, yeah, I think the facility is a whole other issue, you know, we don't have to get into now, but yeah, I, you heard my comments on that too. So, um, yeah, yeah. Take it for what it's worth. I, you know, I, yeah. I find it unlikely that, you know, we'll take it for what it's worth. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that plays out. I've got yeah. other ideas. I mean, there's certainly, you know, some things they could do with the tennis court or whatever, or with the police station. But yeah, that, that facility looks like, uh, you know, shoehorned in is the, is the way it looks on the plant, you know, like just stuck where it doesn't really belong, you know, but anyway, that's another, uh, another issue. But yeah, I wouldn't really want to see like this held up because of that. So anything we could do to try to get something in there, you know, in the spring of 21, hopefully. Um, Steve, it, it was brought to my attention that Kathy had met with Bill Brooks and that he had um, sketched a design and picked out some, um, some plantings. I don't have any other than verbal evidence from her tonight that that had happened. Um, so I don't know, um, maybe, maybe Bill's already got some ideas, I don't know. I think so. I think the, the meeting I attended in, like in person way back when you, you could attend the meeting in person. I, th I think he was there. I didn't see anything, but he kind of described it. So, um, you know, I never actually saw anything sketched or anything like that. But at that time, it sounded like it was something that was going to happen this, you know, the spring of 20. But I didn't even really bother because I knew that wasn't going to happen. But then nothing <clears throat> happened. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, now that we're hopefully. Next year will be turning the corner, and you know, I know for anything to get done in, in the spring, you have to really start kind of making plans for it now. So, just wanted to uh, see where it stood, and you know, give my uh, my thoughts there. So, thanks. That's all. That's all I have. So, so Mike has graciously volunteered to take on this project. Um, uh, and I imagine it just makes sense for him to communicate with Bill, see what, what else Bill has. Uh, Bill, way, quite, quite some time ago, gave me a list of trees. I submitted those to Mike after he volunteered. That's where we are. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll just wait for Mike to update us, I guess, Mike, next time. Yeah, we'll do. Uh, and you followed up with an email saying uh, to hold off for now, right after that. So I will, uh, I'll definitely do that and follow up with Bill. Um, maybe I was misled. I thought Nicholas Perchinski knew about it, but apparently he did not. And that's when I reached out to DJ and DJ seemed like it was a bigger project than I anticipated. But I'll reach out to Bill and we'll see where we, uh, where we stand. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Gary. You have anything else? Uh, no, that's all. Thanks. Thanks for your time. Thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. Okay, that unless Susan has anything, I'm going to move on from public participation um, to the next section, which is a which is a sort of a standing item for proposed new agenda items for next time. And I'll go around. Dave, do you have anything? No. Audrey. Nothing for me. Thanks. Uh, no. I hope I'm there. Okay. Mike D'Angelo. No. Nope. Uh, Chris Larson. I do have something, but it was just a, a question that was asked of me and I didn't know the answer to it. Um, there was a resident, again, on Fairhaven Road, close to the tree that we were discussing earlier. Um, this resident wants to plant trees, kind of, you know, speaks to our project that Dave is spearheading about planting, encouraging people to plant trees. 
they want to plant the same trees on Fairhaven Road. They're on they're right on Fairhaven Road. They want to plant in that area between the sidewalk and the road. They didn't know how to go about it if they could. They're willing to take on the expense themselves, use their landscaper. Um, in the right away. To, yeah, correct. Um, they wanted to, uh, they went to town hall, I guess, uh, over a year ago, and they said they never really got a response. They said they wanted to know what the, the procedure was. Um, so I said, I, I'd find out. Like I said, they're willing to, you know, they're going to buy the trees. They're going to plant them themselves. They're going to use their landscaper. They mentioned they use Celtic Landscaping, which is a, appears to be a very reputable firm. Um, they want to know if they can just basically go ahead and do it or, or what the, uh, what the procedure is and if it's really that big of a deal. Good question. I, I don't think you can plant in the right away. Um, even if you're responsible for maintaining it, Chris, do you have any thoughts? On we, I, you know, the right of way is your property, um, but it has options for the town. So you can plant there. Okay. You just have to know that you may end up losing losing it if the town decides to put a sidewalk there or why there's already a sidewalk or whatever. There. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a, a sidewalk, there. sidewalk there. It's so it's that patch of land between the sidewalk and the road. Okay. So they could get the green light to do it if it was if, if I understand that correctly. So with that said, I think at minimum we should tell them because there was a presentation done on this, uh, and I, I can I can go look it up. But there are sort of there are it is challenging for a tree to grow up that with that little space. Um, and I know there's trees there now, um, and one was just seemingly compromised. Um, maybe it would be helpful if we got that resident that that information as well, or if the landscape company is reputable. I don't know. For me, I would say go for it. You know, but. Uh, I'll let others, I'll let others, uh, others comment. So, do we want to add this as a new agenda item for next time? I guess if it if it needs, I'd say yes. If it needs further discussion, otherwise, um, like I said, they they want to plant the same species of tree that pretty much line the street. They don't have any trees in front of their house. That that was their point. That like for whatever reason. Who knows, maybe they died years ago. Um, so, I mean, it's, if it needs further discussion, I guess so. Um, Chris, or if you have information I could pass along to them, I will. Allison, can you recommend someone in the town to talk to for any hiccups that the resident might have? Yeah, I would direct it to Rich Gordella and to Teresa because certain right away, you don't want anything to impede the right away if need be. You have to make sure there's no water lines, things like that. Yeah. As well. So I would direct it to Teresa. I don't know who they reached out to Bur to Borough Hall because this is the first I'm hearing. They said it was a while ago, I, I guess, you know, when they moved there and you know, so. but they could submit an email or, that. or drop, drop something off to Borough Hall and then we can get it to the appropriate departments. Okay. Yes, I, I suppose there's no further discussion necessary um, unless, yeah, unless you want to follow up on behalf of the resident and talk to Rich. Um, I was just going to say that might be your free giveaway answer. Uh, just not really, but to sort of collide, fit together. Yeah, I think, I think I, the biggest issue is going to be the ability for residents to get by through that that area. Water lines, I think that's a private property issue. That's up to the resident, isn't it? I mean, I could always plant the tree near a water line or a gas line. That's my problem, right? Um, you said call before you dig. If it's not in the right of way, I could always plant the tree near the gas line. I mean, it would be, it would be a silly thing to do. It's just something that you should know not to do, right? That's what be call line. before you dig and all that, so. Yeah. Yeah, so they should they should just be aware of that. All right, all right. Um, okay, so I'm going to move on unless anyone else has anything else. Next meeting uh, with our new schedule, 
It's still going to be January. Six. six is the first Wednesday. January 6th, next meeting. Just a reminder, that's when we do elections for Steve and anybody else who will be uh, officers and so forth. Yes, I'm going to get elected again. <laughs> a re-election in like two months. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be rigged. <laughs> I'm going to um, mail in my ballot. Uh, okay. Wait, I don't get the vote. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll add that to the agenda. Um, I'm sorry. Are we doing every two months? I I didn't. We always to go back to every other month. Every yeah. other month, or are we doing every month? Every other month. Every other month. Every but month? if we need a meeting, okay. If Dave wants one, we are going to definitely have that meeting. We might have three in one month. And then in July, you're bumping it to the 14th as opposed to the seventh. The Correct. Seventh. Wednesday. Yeah. And that's that. So um, I think that's all we have. So a motion to adjourn. All those in favor, say aye. All right. Aye. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone. Sorry to Good night, everyone. Peace Good night. Bye. Yeah.